Hello, how are you? Hello. So good to be with you today. Yes, how are you doing, lovely? I am great. It's a beautiful day. I'm in Indianapolis and the weather is wonderful, so I'm glad oh. to be with you. I love it. I'm so excited to be here. So welcome, guys. Thank you for tuning in. So welcome to Sheen Talk Live. My name is Jacqueline Valdez. I'm today's host, and I'm so honored and so inspired by you. Your launch of your book came out on my birthday, September 15th. <gasps> well, happy belated birthday. <laughs> yes. So this was meant to be. So everyone, welcome Miss Juanita Campbell. She is just a beautiful person. You are just so vulnerable and open. And I love how you are using your story to help inspire others. Well, That's very beautiful. You. Thank you yes. so much. Yes, of course. So tell me about your journey. Tell me about your uh, journey to get to where you're at and to have your book coming out. Well, I tell you, it started um, pretty uh -huh. easily with a diagnosis. Um, okay. I had been busy building a life, building a marriage. Uh, my yeah. husband and I are pastors, co-pastors together. We had started our congregation with nine members. It had grown to thousands by the point wow. where I was motivated to write the book. And basically what happened is one morning I could not get out of bed. Um, wow. I slept 18 to 20 hours a day. Uh, I, that particular morning, I had gotten my girls and my husband breakfast, and my husband offered to take the girls to school. I said, great, that way I can put my mar uh, mascara on in the bathroom mirror instead of the rearview mirror. And so we laughed, and I hugged and kissed everybody goodbye. They left out of the house. I went in the bathroom to put on my makeup, and I just felt terribly ill. I wow. couldn't even explain it. I wasn't sure if it was like the flu or... Maybe I've been moving around too much. Long story short, uh, within about two weeks, I was diagnosed with having had a major depressive episode. Wow. Wow. And so then um, after the episode that you had, what was the next step that you took from there? Well, the experience lasted for quite a while. I slept 18 to 20 hours every day, um, and I just couldn't get out of bed. I began wow. to see a psychiatrist. I first saw my primary care physician so that we could rule out any other kinds of biological illnesses like uh, diabetes or th hypothyroidism or any of those kinds of things. And right. so after she ruled everything out, she said, hey, I think you need to see a psychiatrist. And so I did. The psychiatrist wow. then diagnosed me with having had a major depressive episode. So this was a process. It was a process that involved ruling out other things, taking medication from a psychiatrist, seeing a psychotherapist every two weeks, and wow. basically trying to build a new life. Now, notice I didn't say rebuild a life because yeah. so much about my life is what got me there in the first place. And so this was learning to be in a whole new kind of way. Um, wow. And so that was a real process for me. Wow. And I love that you were talking about this subject because a lot of people are scared to talk about mental health and admit that they're going through a hard time or a depression. And still, sadly, it's kind of a taboo and it shouldn't be. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, nobody, yeah. it's not taboo to say, uh, I've been diagnosed with diabetes yeah. or cancer or any other illness. But when it comes to the mind, we are uh, often so afraid of what we don't know and what we don't understand. But yeah. the reality is people have been experiencing mental health challenges since before the biblical days. You know, if you look at the story about King Saul, it talks about how uh, David would have to come and play his harp to calm the king down. Why? Wow. Because the king had undiagnosed mental health challenges. And so wow. the reality is, I'm hoping that my book will get us talking in such a way that we can begin to help tear down the walls of shame and stigma, and we can talk about the reality. I, I love it. Michelle Williams of Destiny's Child, she and um, Tina Knowles Lawson and I were doing an interview, and Michelle said, why is it we can talk about everything from the neck down? Everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything. But not from wow. the neck up. And so, like Michelle, as advocates for mental health awareness and conversation, I'm hoping that this book, Learning to Be, will get us talking and will help yeah. open uh, some doors that have been closed by shame and lack of insight. Uh, I love it so much. 
I um, totally relate because I have been through a lot of hardships in my life and I've lost a lot of loved ones. And there's been times where I've caught myself in a funk, in a depression, and just struggling to get out of bed or having really bad anxiety. Sure. And so sure. it's your book has been inspiring me and it's been making me open up more regarding Good. my situation. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. That's what I'd hoped for. You know, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned anxiety because often depression and anxiety are like twins. They, yes. they follow each other, you know. And so one of the things I want to say to your audience mm -hmm. is that um, often, in, in my case, it was a mental health diagnosis, but it could have okay. been a divorce. It could have been someone losing a job. It could have been a dream that uh, dev got devastated in some way or a relationship that blew up. Each of us has a place where the thing that seems to be the most devastating thing in our life can be the most significant and most transformative place in our life. For me, yeah. it was depression. Wow. How did you find uh, the strength to really dig deep in and not let the fear overcome you and really get through it? Well, I'm going to tell you, one of the things that happened for me right off the top is mm -hmm. that in this place of depression, my husband and my daughters were going about their normal day, but I couldn't get out of bed, so I was at home. Right. That gave me a lot of silence and a lot of mm -hmm. solitude, which many of us are experiencing right now during COVID-19. Right. And during that silence, the spirit began to just kind of talk to me and ask me a couple of critical questions. One was, who are you? And so often people ask us, who are we? And what they're really saying is, what do you do for a living? Yeah. Wow. But as the spirit was asking me that question, I was being invited to take a look at myself. One of the best ways we take a look at ourselves is to take a look at the story we've been telling ourselves about ourselves. Mm. I've been saying, okay, I'm going to be, a, as, a, as a child, I remember thinking, I want to be a good little girl. I want to follow all the rules. I want to do all the right stuff. And yeah. so what, what that means is you live your life wanting other people to accept you and approve of you and pat you on the back. And as long as there's carrots dangling out, you'll work as hard and you'll try harder and work harder. Yeah. The crash helped me to realize I simply couldn't live like that any longer. Wow. Wow. I love that because it's so true. We get so caught up in just moving, moving, moving and not really self-reflecting Right. And worrying too much about what other people think. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Or feeling as though uh, our approval and acceptance have to come outside of ourselves. Yeah. What the, the presence uh, that I call God that abides in all of us, the breath that breathes within all of us, that power is uh, uh, affirming for all of us that we are valuable, that yes. we are worthy that we're already approved of because that presence is living in us. And see, even as a pastor, I would say that to people, but I hadn't internalized it for myself. And so wow. the dark night of the soul, this experience of depression became this place where my life fell apart wow. so that God could invite me into creating a life that would really be worth living. Um, I tell people all the time, it was, it was the, the most horrific point of my life, but I wouldn't change anything because it gave me the life I have now. Oh, and I feel like so much beauty can come out of such a darkness and such Absolutely. a shallow place. And you start to tell your story and other people are going through this and no one's really out there saying it's going to be okay. There's That's more right. people going through this and yeah. inspiring each other. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, we just, uh, September was suicide prevention awareness yeah. prevention month. And so one of the things I want to say to anybody in your audience who might be contemplating suicide, who might be feeling as though uh, the only way they're going to experience, what they're experiencing is to take their own life. I want to say to you, 
that um, there's another question to ask. Um, and that question is, what if this is an invitation to create a new life? Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that all of us are given these opportunities, these dark nights of the soul, these places where we realize that the things we have been working for and working toward aren't working for us, right? And right. so for me, the dark night of the soul became the place where I realized, and it didn't happen overnight, I got to tell you, yeah, but that it was darkest right before wow. the dawn. That's mm -hmm. not just a saying. It's a reality that we feel our worst. We feel the most intense pain right before a little light shines in. And that little light for me, one of the lights came when my therapist said to me one day, he said, now, Juanita, you know you're going to have to live with this for the rest of your life, right? I thought, oh, my God, how dare he say that to me? Wow. How terrible. But the reality was, and it took time, it took yeah. a few years for me to get the message. And here was what the message was. Uh -huh. Juanita Rasmus, you're living a new way. Mm. It's going to take a time, a while, for you to get this new way of living under your belt. Now, that's mm. what he was really saying to me. You see, now I know some things about myself. I can't go back. Yeah. I know that I have to set healthy boundaries in relationships. I can't be uh, the person doing and giving without uh, end without measure, that I have yeah. to take care of myself. The flight attendants tell us all the time, <laughs> in the event that the cabin loses pressure, what? Put on your mask first. Yes. I hadn't been living a my mask first life prior to oh the crash, gosh. but I understand that now. Oh my gosh, I am so inspired by you. I have been um, in the same kind of area, and this year, the last couple months, has been like a rebirth. And I am now starting to do more self-love. Mm -hmm. I lost my first love to suicide. Oh, so wow. I've had some dark times too. And it's just, um, yeah, it's like a rebirth. So, it is. And I'm finding is. more spirituality too now. Good, good. Well, you know, I think the reality is we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And yes. sometimes we get it turned around. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm so inspired by you. I'm so well, glad and honored you. to have this conversation with you. Thank so you're you. also doing, um, you did a TED Talk or you have a TED Talk coming up? Yes, I have a TED Talk. I did it uh, at Woo. the end of last year. So yes, yeah, you can go to TED.com and look for Juanita, J-U-A-N-I-T-A, Rasmus, R-A-S-M-U-S. Campbell, my name is Juanita Campbell Rasmus, but I think that TED Talk says Juanita Rasmus. Okay, okay, exciting. We will have to keep our eyes posted for that. So what other adventures do you have coming out for you? Well, oh, believe it or not, one of the <laughs> great things I'm really excited about is that on November the 7th, I'll mm -hmm. be hosting a Learning to Be experience. It'll be oh. an interactive um, two and a half hour workshop. And people who would like to get more information about that can go to JuanitaRasmus.com. Um, I think my team is posting the flyer up this evening, uh, but I'm excited about that because it'll be taking some of the principles that we talk about in learning to be and actually helping people work through it. Um, One of the challenges I think we face is so often we wait to January to start thinking about the next year. Yes. I'm inviting people on November 7th to begin to think about who they want to be next year and what mm -hmm. they love and how they want to engage what they love. One of my other main lessons, and I got to tell you, this is so yes. important, Please. is do you know that I realized, or I came to realize, uh -huh. that I had put all the things that were important to me on the back burner. Mm. I was putting everybody else's needs and desires before mine. And that happened. And what I, it does happen yeah. because uh, so often we feel, number one, as though we've been gifted to help and serve others, which is true. But I had stopped dreaming about things that were important to me. And so that's why in one of the chapters in Learning to Be, I talk about going skydiving. Woo! <laughs> because it's important for us to do the things that give us life, the yeah. things that we love, even if people around us are freaked out by our choices. <laughs> I love it. Wow. That's so cool. Yes. 
I'm so excited. Your book, Learning to Be, and all the things that are coming um, from it, and all of these you. lessons that we're able to learn from it, and that you're sharing this dark experience. Sure, sure. Yeah. Can I share a technique with your audience that's been very helpful? It's one that's in the yes. book. So Please. I invite you to sit up tall and straight in your seat, put your feet flat on the floor, turn your hands palm side up, and lay them on your thighs. Now take a deep breath, breathing in through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. And again, breathe in through your nose, exhaling through your mouth. Now you keep breathing while I talk. As we move through this space that's COVID-19, we're all experiencing a measure of mental health challenge. And so I'm inviting you to breathe in through your nose, to notice the cool air that comes into your nose and just be with it. Then on the exhale, as you exhale through your mouth, notice the warm air, exhale, and be with the exhale. Allow yourself to do that. I usually try to do it 30 minutes every day. And then I do some breathing breaks throughout the day. Why? Okay. Because we are experiencing anxiety. And this kind of in through the nose, out through the mouth, slow breathing helps to calm the autonomic nervous system, our fight and flight and freeze system, mm -hmm. right? And so throughout the day, Take some breathing breaks so that you can realign the autonomic nervous system, calm it down, and then you'll find yourself able to be more present. You'll find yourself able to be more creative. You'll find yourself able to move through whatever other challenges the day might offer you. But you will have practice calming your autonomic nervous system. And for those parents who are doing homeschooling with their kids, I really encourage you to teach your kids how to do this breathing in through the nose and notice the cool air, out through the mouth, notice the warm air as they're changing subjects because it'll help them calm the anxiety, say, from math as they enter into the reading or the science or whatever the next subject might be. If we'll teach this to our children, we'll give them a tool that will last them a lifetime. And if we'll practice it, it'll last our lifetime. I love it. I'm going to do that every day now. <laughs> and I'm going to good, think good. about you. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. You also created a uh, bread of life. Yes. Yes, tell us about that. Well, when we started our ministry 28 years ago, um, our pastor gave us an opportunity to take an abandoned church in downtown Houston and see what we could do with it. Uh, my husband and I weren't in ministry um, as pastors prior to that. We were just servants in our congregation. But what happened is when we got to the physical building, there were literally homeless men and women sleeping on the doorsteps because it was a refuge in downtown Houston. And so immediately we said, okay, first thing we need to do is provide some meals to this homeless community. And so out of that, the bread of life was born. It's rooted in um, the New Testament scripture, Matthew 25 and 35, that says uh, where, where Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was sick and in prison, you came to see about me. So what the Bread of Life Inc. does, it's a nonprofit 501c3. And we do everything that that passage talks about. We started with meals. We also uh, moved from meals to the homeless community to providing housing. And that's where Tina Knowles Lawson and Beyonce came in. They helped us to fund uh, the Knowles Timonos Place Apartments, which was uh, our very first apartment complex. And now we have about $30 million worth of housing in downtown Houston for formerly homeless men and women. Uh, right now, COVID-19 has us providing uh, groceries and personal care items and wow. household cleaning products to about a thousand families a week oh. who never expected to be in our line. Wow, that's incredible. That's amazing that you're doing such uh, rewarding work in helping others live a more fulfilling life and exactly. not feel like they're alone. 
Exactly. And, you know, I, I, I think all the time we pass out groceries and, and uh, Lysol and bleach and all the other things that families need uh, who have found themselves recently under or unemployed. But yes. really what we're passing out is hope. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. I love it. I love everything that you do. And I love well, your book. You. Sheen Magazine has so much love for you and so much well, respect you. for you. Yes. Thank you Was there so anything much. else that you wanted to tell the viewers before we go? Well, sure. I'd like them to join me on social media, Juanita Rasmus. And I think you can see some of the, uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. So join me on there so you can stay informed about what we're doing because we're doing some really transformative life-giving work. And of course, join me for November the 7th for the Learning to Be Experience. I can't thank you enough for your time. And Thanks for having us today. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. So much love. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Make it a great one. <laughs> yes. <laughs>